Hi guys, and welcome to week four of our broiler project at Townline Poultry Farm. Just a quick recap, we have been walking through the weekly process of raising meat birds from one day old baby chicks. Check the links below for um, to view weeks one, two, and three to get caught up, and thank you for tuning in. Today we're gonna talk about, of course, temperature, uh, the temperature adjustment that's needed at week four, uh, as well as any brooder changes or cleanup that's needed. Uh, we're going to take a look at how big they've gotten and um, talk about the feed adjustments needed at week four. We're going to be at about 80 degrees. So just like the previous weeks, there's a couple different ways you can do that. You can raise your heat lamps um, or expand your brooder space. We opened up our brooder space to our full area of raising broilers last week. Um, so really we didn't need to make any adjustments on the height or anything because they have plenty of space to get uh, away from the heat or get closer to it. Still keeping in mind where you're placing your waterers and your feeders so that they stay comfortable. Um, weighing them this week was pretty exciting. If uh, you've been raising meat birds with us or just watching, you can tell that there was a big difference with our chicks from week three to four. Our birds are already at two and a quarter pounds or 36 ounces. That's over double from what they weighed at week three. And at week three, they weighed over double what they did at week two. So you can tell a very rapid growing bird. Um, they've also reached the phase that we talked about a few weeks ago where they're starting to look a little awkward, kind of like going through puberty. They are losing a lot of their down, um, which is kind of making them look like they're balding. But their adult feathers are coming in, which um, which is very normal for them to look like this, kind of balding, but their adult feathers will come in very quickly and they'll look like normal chickens here pretty soon. We also wanted to mention that we are, while we are growing our meat birds through to eight weeks, we do not typically recommend raising them past nine weeks. They, they just get so big um, and so quickly that at that point it just starts to get, um, you run into a few more health issues. Um, eight weeks is, is kind of ideal. You can go a little bit bigger up to nine weeks, but we don't really recommend going past that. There are other ages you can have them butchered, which is what we will cover next week. Uh, the different ages you could have them processed and why, depending on what your desired outcome is. So feed. Feed kind of starts to change at this time. We are gonna finish our, our last bag of the starter grower feed, which is at that very high percentage protein. Um, between weeks four and five is when we really suggest changing that to a grower finisher feed. It's just a little bit less percentage protein and some other nutritional differences that is more appropriate for um, the way that they are growing for the last weeks before you have them processed. So like I said, we're gonna finish out our last bag of feed and once we're done with that, we'll go ahead and change it to the grower finisher feed. A couple things you should be checking every day in your brooder um, that we had um, one of our guys kind of take care of for us earlier today is always checking the cleanliness of your water, always making sure that they have feed during the day but not at night, like that 12 hours on, 12 hours off feed, feeding schedule we talked about last week. But also this week we really started to notice that our um, bedding was starting to get pretty dirty. Their litter was starting to build up. So um, we actually went ahead and shoveled out some of our very soiled litter and added completely fresh bedding. Uh, you'll just notice that it gets kind of mucked down um, and, and that can be a little rough on their legs. So we went ahead and added fresh bedding, uh, made it all nice and clean for them cleaning out their waters every day. Um, you know, even if in their feeders, they're starting to get litter in there or bedding, you know, you wanna make sure you're dumping that out, putting fresh feed in there so that everything's nice and clean for them as they grow. You'll notice they even lay in their feeders once in a while if, they, if, if you're using an open feeding, um, open feeding equipment like we do. <laughs> one thing we talked about last week or one thing that we stressed last week was changing the feeding schedule. So if, if you were still offering them continuous feed day and night, this is when you would start to notice some health issues or symptoms that health issues are um, starting to happen. Heart attacks are a, a big problem with meat birds when you don't limit their feed. Um, and a couple things you can look for uh, that would indicate that that's a problem you might start running into is the color of their combs, their waddles, and kind of just their, their head and face in general. If you're noticing a bluish, purple color, um, that's gonna indicate that they're, they're not doing so good, that that feeding schedule is really gonna be necessary. Um, also, if you have 
Unfortunately, ran into any that have died in your brooder, um, and particularly if you found them laying on their backs, feet up, that is a sign of a heart attack. And again, that's something that happens when you don't start restricting their feed, that they're not getting enough exercise and they're just eating too much and putting on too much weight too, mo too quickly. Um, and again, that's, that's why we really stress the importance of that feeding schedule. Also with uh, leg issues, you'll notice they lay down a lot. Um, so if they just have continuous access to feed and they're laying there and eating and they gain too much weight, sometimes they'll have trouble standing back up because their legs have not developed properly as they've put on so much weight. So again, really important to uh, restrict that feed. Uh, usually at night is the easiest for most people so that they start to get up and look around for food and get some exercise. Good for their heart and good for their legs. So pasture raising is something that is an option for meat birds. It's not uh, the most frequent choice for this type of meat bird. We do have another type of meat bird that is uh, more popular for pasture raising, but it is still very possible for uh, the Cornish cross. Um, while we are raising just within a coop the whole time, um, you can definitely use like mobile tractors um, or other, um, you know, just pasture raising equipment or, or uh, setups so that your birds are getting some exercise that way. They will still look for, for grubs or forage for food, which is also really good for them to get exercise. They may not grow quite as quickly as say ours are in a, an enclosed environment, um, but definitely still possible and, and a good way to raise broilers if that's what you choose. So that pretty much wraps up what to watch for at week four. I mean, it's, it's starting to get to be pretty easy. We do still need the additional heat source. They are not fully feathered out, like we mentioned. Um, so you'll wanna make sure the heat lamp is still uh, available and at the right temperature for them. Um, you know, change out the feed sometime between this week and next week uh, to the grower finisher, which is uh, just more uh, nutritionally balanced for the older meat birds. Make sure to like and subscribe to stay tuned for next week's video where we will cover uh, the different ages that you can have your birds butchered at and why, um, depending on the desired outcome you are looking for. Um, and comment any questions you might have and thank you for joining us.